Good morning, or wherever it is you are. I am dressed in all my finery for two reasons. The first reason is I'm going to finish off the consolidation of the scripts that we've been doing with the uh, English vernacular. <laughs> Hello, Phoebe. With the English vernacular minuscules in the right place, and I thought it would be nice to do it in a visual context. And the second reason is I've had a lot of I've had, <laughs> I've had a lot of inspiration um, from the groups that I'm sending this to, and it's my way of saying thank you. And thank you also to Dave Fife of History Matters Limited, who shoved me screaming from the 14th century backwards into the 11th. And you know, it was the best thing he could ever have done. So let's get started. Oh, <laughs> oh sorry, I've got a very large veil. And it's three metres wide, and you sit on it, and it pulls you. Okay. Now you can see why the quills are cut short without the barbs, because you get them caught in your in your clothing. Normally, with a veil, it would be kind of wrapped around like a scarf, but this is silk, and it's very slippy, and it's in the way. So I have it pinned back, which I'm sure women in the day probably did as well. All right. Do I need my glasses? Maybe not. So we're going to start with the Roman Uncials, and that's all I'm going to write, Roman Uncials in that script. And just for fun, I call this one Athelfed because it's got some rather sexy letters. So let's just go. I haven't got loaded a think on it yet. Now remember, this is based on the circle, flat to the line, here we go, here's the nice, the nice feminine sort of M, I'm missing the line because I haven't got my glasses on, at least I did that one to the right thing because I knew what I was doing there, all right, flat to the line, into the wet ink, into the wet ink and just tip your corner there and just give it a little drag. And that gives it a nice, <laughs> yes, Beady, leaping about. That gives it a nice little flourish. And here we go. There's the horizontal. Oh, and don't forget here, look, this is a little re reinforcement as well. Flat to the line, strong, very skinny there. That means it's a majuscule. Now, this one you put on the side now for the end. And you put a little kind of shape up the top there, little diamond. It'll go if I have enough ink. And then you pull that across. Somebody said that I thought I was writing very quickly. Well, I don't really think it's that quick. It's, it's a, you, you need precision and precision takes time. Consciously aware of where the corners of your pen are. And you hear it squeaking, that's because it's on paper. Okay, we're going to do a little serif now, that's that twisted one. So here we go, halfway round like we're doing an O, the mother letter of them all. Into the wet ink, straight across the line and twist. And now an I, an A. Remember I told you, don't think in words, think in letters. I made a mistake the other day thinking in words, so trust me. Twist again and another twist again. Which helps if you have enough ink on the pen to actually do it. All right. Not a brilliant S, but there we go. Roman Ancials. All right. The next one, and we've called that one Athelford just for a bit of fun. The second one, you'll probably recall, I called that one Athelstan because this one's really standing straight on the line and very, very powerful. So here we go with, with that one now. This is the half unseal. Same, it's a majuscule, so you've still got it fairly flat to the line. You can go to about 10 degrees. This one has a very distinctive wedge. If you're doing Lindisfarne Gospels, that wedge is smaller. 
Now there's two things you can do here. You can twist the pen and make it slightly thicker or when I come to another letter, I'll do the other method. This is Book of Kells A, which is slightly flattened. The Lindisfarne Gospels is round. There's the wedge. Okay, we'll do a thickened one now. You've got a wedge there for the F, which goes below the eye. Now you can you can press harder with a quill, but you can't do it with a metal. You see how I've done a little tiny shugle, a little movement to the side. You've got to take all the weight off the pen so it just slides up the ink to make it thicker. Um, I don't recommend that the beginners try that because you're probably going to make a big spluttering mess of it. But that's the idea anyway. Right, that's half. You may recall, I hope you recall, that this is a an insular alphabet, which means from insularum of the islands. <laughs> trying to spell in my head and try to talk to you is really interesting. Right, uh, N. Yeah, I'm just trying to think which one I'm doing here. Uh, I don't want to write today. It was writing perfectly well yesterday. N. And this one is this. with, the, And that's got a shorter... Slightly flattened again. I, A. It would have been easier if I had done this with a modern pen because I've got some that I've got a pilot parallels, which I'll show you in a minute. The S is interesting because it's got a quite a thick top, a big top, but when you make a little circle remember i told you how to do that if you follow that circle around you hit the edge when it's coming in so it's got a sort of a smaller bottom i'm not going to put well i was going to put insular insular on it but i'm not going to put insular it's going to take too long all right so now we get to the minuscules now you remember with that one as well this one keeps its angle so both strokes are the same weight right here we go this is the one that I started out with for you. Oh, I'm trying to think what it is. English, yes. I'm not thinking. All right, so we're doing it in. Now you see how much quicker this is. There's less pen lifts. Got a little serif. S. H. I didn't give this a name the first time round, but I've given it a name now because all these ascenders look like spears. And then you've got the descenders, which are legs, and there in the middle is the shield wall. So I'm going to call this one Uhtred of Bebenberg which I thought was a bit of fun. So this is English vernacular. Oh, grief. Doesn't it want to write on this paper today? Now, the distinguishing letters. Here's the first one. The R. And there's the S. I'm going to do the Irish next because that's different again. N. A. This is not my best calligraphy, I'm afraid, folks. Fernac. <laughs> I'm trying to think of it. You. But this is a much more cursive kind of a script than the former ones. I need to really recut the quill, but I haven't got a separate one, so we'll just have to persevere. All right, there we are, English vernacular. I'm just going to take the board up. One of the reasons, oh. <laughs> oh, I'll tell you what I forgot to say. Say good morning, Anne. Good morning. <laughs> Can I show them the picture yet? At the end. We'll say goodbye. Woo! At the end. Okay. <laughs> they were asking, you see. <laughs>
All right, this is now this is the Irish one. Only so you can see it actually think. So we've got I and we've got the R. And it depends where it's from. So let's do annals of Ulster. And that was done on a slant. Okay, and now it's 10 minutes. So I'm all right. Let me just finish the writing. I think that'll probably be about 12. Irish. This is insular. There's the A. See how different it is to the one above. Right, there's the Irish insular. And here's Carol Injun. After this, I'm going to stop the tape because I'm going to do it in smaller chunks and we'll see if I need to do one chunk or if we need to need two. This is Carolingian. More compressed. Can you see that? And here's the beginning of the of the modern G that we will recognize. The little ear on it. So the Irish minuscules I'm going to call Aidan because that's actually Saint Aidan was from Ireland. And this one I'm going to call Alquin because he's the man who designed it. Okay. That is the scripts that I have shown you, and they're all up to uh, the gothic period so i'm now going to say oh, i hope you enjoyed that because it was really dreadful calligraphy and i do apologize um my my, my headings were okay and I'm, I'm now going to change and i'm going to tell you about pens so i'll do that on the next one thanks Anne.